I'm so excited. We're going to talk about majors today. Hey, hey. I am pulling up some slides and I'm letting folks join the live. Welcome. I see some folks are already joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to get started shortly. So excited for today's live presentation about majors. I'm going to give some folks a little bit of time to join because we are going to cover a lot of information today. Um, I'm going to try to squeeze as much information in in as little time as possible. Um, but if you don't know, we have a ton of majors at CCS. So, oh, thanks for the hearts. Um, welcome, everyone. So I see folks are joining in. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you're new to my Instagram page, my name is Brandi Keeler. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at CCS. And today we are going to talk about the different majors that we offer at our school. Um, so we have departments, we have about 11 departments, but what a lot of students don't know is that we actually have about 18 different majors. Um, and then you add on top of that our, our education certification and our liberal arts concentrations. And there are a lot of things that you can study at CCS. And it can be challenging to figure out what to choose from, right? Um, if you're anything like I was in high school, you just love creativity, you love art, and you're excited about it all. And it may be like being a kid in a candy shop. You don't know what to choose from. So today we're going to talk about not only each of these majors. Like I said, there are a ton of them. So just get a gander at each of the things we're going to talk about. But we're also going to cover some things that can help you when it comes to choosing your major, right? So we're going to talk about what students learn in each of the programs at CCS. We're going to talk about some of the tools and methods that they use in the classroom to really learn these skills. Um, we're also going to talk about the careers that students can step into with these degrees and then how you can know if it's a good fit for you as a major. So let's dive right in. We are going to start off with advertising design, which is a really fun major. So advertising design is all about people who are artists of ideas. Um, we always say that the advertising students are the people who can think of a million ideas more than they can even make sometimes, right? And they may be more interested in you know, creating ideas than actually physically making, uh, but they're getting their hands in a lot of different mediums in the program at CCS. They're learning video editing, graphic design, writing, um, and more because they are going to eventually in their careers become the people who are speaking on behalf of brands. Advertising isn't just about selling people a product, that is a part of it, but it's really about understanding how people think and using your creativity, using your uh, imagination and your way of thinking to provide some unique insights into that person and a way to speak to them, right? So you're speaking on behalf of brands and th on things like TV commercials, billboards, radio ads, filters, experiences, websites, apps, and more. So art directors are really multifaceted artists. And these are some examples. I'm going to show some examples of student work throughout this. Um, these are some examples of the types of work that students are producing. So they're making full campaigns and they're showing what these uh, brand ideals look like in execution in a lot of different areas, right? So again, you may be promoting to sell a product, but you may be promoting a social cause. You may be speaking on behalf of a political party, right? Advertising has a lot of power. We think about some of the things that we remember uh, without even thinking about it, like taglines. The tagline for Nike is just do it. The tagline for skills is taste the rainbow. That wasn't a copywriter who took the time to think about a simple phrase that would be etched in our minds forever to make us remember those brands. So students in the program are learning to take skills about marketing, skills about design, skills about creative problem solving and merging all of those together. And they're doing so in a setting that's very similar to an advertising agency setting. So students are partnered on their projects in the way that teams work together in advertising agencies. And when they're done with this amazing program at CCS, students graduate and go on to uh, successful careers as things like creative directors and art directors. They go on to become bloggers. They are social media managers. They do public relations work. They do cinematography. Uh, they're copywriters, like I mentioned earlier, and producers, and much, much more. So ways that you can tell if this is a good fit for you as a major, if you are um, an advertising design major, um, these are some signs to look for. So if you're always coming up with new creative ideas for projects, for brands, for art, for anything, but you don't necessarily always want to physically make the things, you may be an art director at heart, because that's what they do in the career, right? <laughs> they're, they're directing other creatives to bring those visions to life. 
Or if you spend more time focusing on the commercials during the Super Bowl than you do the game, because I know I was like one of those people. I was like, I don't watch the game. I just want to watch the commercials. You may be <laughs> into advertising. Um, one thing that a lot of people ask about is like, do we have creative writing? Copywriting is a huge part of the the advertising industry. And if you're someone who really thinks about words, you have a way with words, but you also are visually talented, advertising may be a, a path to consider. Especially if you're um, very particular about your brand, your personal brand presence on things like social media. If you stress about the characters that you're using in your captions on Instagram or your tweets, or you're curating your social media presence to have a certain voice, that's what social media people do, who have a degree in advertising design. So those are some things to consider if you are interested in becoming an idea artist. Next, we are going to talk about art practice. Um, we recently uh, changed the name of this major. It was known as fine arts. But again, that is not all that students are doing in this major, right? Fine artists are, yes, painters and sculptors, but people with an art practice do a lot of different things, right? In the major at CCS, our art practice students are learning skills for painting, printmaking, sculpture, but they're also learning things like experimental uh, ways of approaching art. Maybe they're doing some uh, installation art. Maybe they're doing performance-based fine art, right? Um, the thing about art practice is these are the students who just love art. They may be people who are interested in art history. They love going to museums. They love immersing themselves in this visual world. And the thing that's unique about an art practice is these students are really learning about different modalities, different materials, different ways of thinking to allow them to speak through their art, right? They're typically commenting on things about their lives, about society, etc., using art as the method to do that. Now, when we think about an art practice, some people may think about a studio artist, and that is definitely a path that CCS prepares students for. But students are also doing all different types of things once they get a degree in fine arts, right? Or in art practice. They are community organizers, right? They are using their creativity and their way of thinking about the world to mobilize people. They are public artists. They're taking their artwork out of the studio, out of the gallery, and into communities that need art to activate spaces and, and communities. They are multidisciplinary co collaborators. I was just recently actually watching a show on Netflix um, called the, the Big Flower Fight. It's a, a show about people doing tertiary work, like uh, flower, floral arrangements and, and <laughs> um, like beautiful uh, garden art. But the people who won were actually fine artists. They're art people with an art practice. They had no background in floral arrangements, but they knew how to think creatively about arranging material and making things that were visually appealing, but also thought provoking. That's the power of a, someone with an art practice. Um, people can go on to become art critics, curators. Um, they can own their own galleries. They can uh, operate galleries. They work in art spaces. Uh, restoration artists are a great example. These are people who have an understanding of art, but can restore existing pieces of art, right? It's not even always creating your own art as a, a person with an art practice. Um, so it's, it's a really unique major. It's very interdisciplinary. If you're someone who is interested in a lot of different things, art practice is a great field to, to consider. And students who graduate from this program at CCS, yes, many of them start right away in their careers, but some of them also go on to highly respected secondary education programs, um, like getting their master's degree at Yale um, or you know Princeton or other places. They're doing residencies and fellowships um, and really just growing their practice as an artist. So ways to know if this is your major, there are a few. One is if you're one of those people that's, like I said earlier, passionate about art for art's sake, right? Um, and you have a personal vision or a voice that you feel can only be expressed through art. That's, that's a sign that, that this may be a major to explore. If you're someone who just likes going to museums, art museums particularly, um, learning about art history, this may be a good major for you to consider. Um, especially if you have dreams of having your art on those gallery and museum walls. Um, this is a great, great major to consider. I know we have alumni who have had their work, who currently have their work um, in the Detroit Institute of Arts, on the walls at the MoMA, in the Whitney Biennial. Um, so if you want your work on those walls, uh, this is a great major to consider. Um, and if you're a person who likes gathering people to be in conversation about creativity, about artwork, um, art practice is also something that you may consider. 
So now we're going to talk about a major with another name that you may not be as familiar with, communication design. Um, this again has had a name, a name change because we realize that the world is growing and CCS and the way that we uh, refer to the things we offer has to change with it. Graphic design is a limited way of talking about what we offer in our communication design program because it's not just graphic design. Yes, students are learning the, the skills for hierarchy, for design language, typography, um, you know, branding, et cetera. They're learning graphic design, but they're also understanding that 2D print graphic is not the only, 2D print graphics are not the only thing that graphic designers are needing to know in today's marketplace, right? Um, these designers need to know how to do motion-based graphic, right? You think about the opening sequence of your favorite TV show or movie, or you think about motion-based graphics in the social media space, right? So I'm making beautiful um, typographic GIFs, for example. And GIFs is a very small sliver of what I'm talking about but, uh, when I refer to motion graphics. But motion graphic artists are communications designers, right? You think about people who are user interface designers. They're designing the interface of apps like this, right? The fact that I can be on Instagram live streaming to you, but also functionally paging through slides and seeing a chat. Someone had to think about how does this interface work seamlessly where someone can intuitively know what to click on and use this app, right? That's someone who's designing this, this interface and this experience. So user interface, user experience designers, those are graphic designers, right? Um, these are the people who are designing not only our apps, but the websites that we use and interactive experiences, right? Um, anytime we use our finger to experience, like uh, access our, our phone, for example, someone had to code that experience and think about the design language behind that. Um, and many of the video games that we use, right? Someone's thinking about the, the user interface. So um, graphic design is a very b wide spectrum and communication design is really an effective way of talking about what we offer at CCI. So like I said, typography, branding, packaging, uh, coding, uh, color theory, all sorts of things go into what students are learning as communication designers at CCS. Um, so if you're interested in doing any number of these things, this is a great major to consider. Um, and like I mentioned, students graduate as graphic designers, user interface and experience designers, web designers, brand managers. Brand managers, they really think about entire systems of design, right? So you think about, um, I'll just use this example because it's on top of my head, Nike. Um, everything that comes out of Nike feels like it comes from Nike, right? Um, that's intentional. There's someone thinking about the colors that are used, the typography that are used, um, the spacing and relationship of those elements on all different types of things, the websites, the packaging, the products themselves. Brand managers are people who understand design language across the spectrum of applications, and that's something that you learn in communications design. Um, information designers. You've ever looked at an Instagram, uh, not Instagram, uh, an infographic and thought, this makes this large topic very easy to digest and understand. Someone can parse through a lot of complex, dense information and make that easy to digest. That's someone who uh, has a background in communication design. And obviously entrepreneur. Designers can work in design firms, but they can also work for themselves um, as freelance designers or start their own firms, which a lot of our alumni at CCS have gone on to do. So ways to know if this is your major um, is you are the person, uh, whether it's at high school or in your community, who's always being asked to design the flyers or the t-shirts or the logos for, the, for things that you're involved in or a part of, right? Um, and you're volunteering to do these things without people asking. That's a really good sign. Um, you may love organizing things. You may love visually organizing information in a way where it's not just aesthetically pleasing, but it makes sense, right? Um, a little bit of OCD goes in there. But you also may be a person who likes to tinker and play and experiment. You don't have a rigid way of thinking about things. That's a big uh, facet of our communications design program at CCS. Um, but again, it's not just graphic design. You may be someone who loves motion graphics. You actually pay attention to the opening sequence of your favorite TV show and how the, the actors' names are displayed and the way the typography interacts with the, the visuals. You, you might love those things, right? These are signs that this is a major to consider. If you're someone who pays more attention to the packaging at the store and that influences what you will buy, you may be a, a communication design, something to consider. All right, now we're going to talk about... Uh, the crafts and the craft and material studies department at CCS. At CCS, our craft and material studies department has five areas of focus. I'm going to quickly go through the five areas, starting with ceramics. So, well, actually, I'm going to start with the, the department overall. 
if you like 3D art more than 2D, if you like making things, if you like the idea of getting dirty and working with your hands, that's what our students are doing in the craft and material studies department. They're really getting an in-depth understanding of a particular material and the applications of that material in a variety of settings. So for ceramic students, that involves obviously, you know, sculpting ceramic pieces, but uh, learning how to cast things in ceramics, learning how glazes work, learning actually the chemistry of making their own glazes. And they're doing this for both art and functional ceramics work, right? So you may be doing some wheel thrown pieces. You may be firing things uh, in our kilns, which we have six different types of kilns. If you're into ceramics, really look into what we offer our ceramic students because it's, it's world class and, and, and a very in-depth program. Uh, but we have ceramics, that's one area of craft and material studies. We have fiber and textiles. Um, so this program is really a combination that's influenced by art, technology, a little bit of craft, and design. Um, because you think about fiber or, or um, uh, textiles as a material, right? Any pliable fabric. Those are things that can not only work in an industry setting, like working on textiles that go into furniture or fashion, etc., but it can also be something that skews into an art industry, right? You can work on 3D sculptural pieces made of fabric, right? I know one of our um, a lot from the department, Lakia, um, she does these beautiful masks that are like woven and beaded and insane, mind-blowing artwork. And it's it's art, right? And so these students are teetering that intersection of art and design using both traditional methods like weaving and sewing, but also some, uh, you know, trending and future setting uh, methods like printing on fabric or laser cutting and more. So if you're interested in working in the fiber and materials world, whether that's for costuming or puppetry or for your own practice as a fiber artist, uh, that's what we're offering in that program at CCS. We also have furniture as an area of focus. Furniture in our craft and material studies major is a marriage between product design and an art, right? So these students are making a specific type of art, it's furniture, but it's unique furniture. They're learning a very intense amount of woodworking skills, but it's interdisciplinary at CCS. So students are also learning to work with metal, with glass, with all the other uh, materials within the craft and material studies uh, uh, program to make unique pieces of furniture. And they are amazing crafts people who come from this program making not just the furniture you see that's mass produced in Ikea, but they're making like high-end, beautiful, artful pieces of furniture that typically have a theory or a concept behind them. We also have glass, and excuse me if you all can hear my baby in the background, she is not happy that mom's not there. Um, <laughs> but we also have glass, and our glass program at CCS is again about traditional and innovative techniques to working with glass as a material. So this is not just glass blowing, though that's a big amazing part of the program, but it's uh, slumping, working with cold techniques for glass manipulation. And artists who complete this program at CCS, they are doing, again, not only things for their own art practice, we have alumni who are entrepreneurs making beautiful um, art glass work, but then we also have people working on things like um, uh, lighting fixtures that are made of glass, right? Um, someone has to have an artful understanding, but also technical skills to be able to produce those pieces of work. And students are learning a variety of techniques in the glass program at CCS. Uh, metal smithing and jewelry is for students who want to work on everything from small scale metal jewelry to large fabricated metal sculpture, whether you want to work in bronze, whether you want to become a blacksmith, whether you want to become a jeweler. There are a lot of different uh, methods for working with metal, right? So there's an in-depth amount of exposure to the medium that students are learning in the program so they can manipulate it to work in a variety of settings. All right. So those are the five areas, the five different majors within that department of craft and material studies, which lends itself to a ton of different careers, right? So I mentioned some as we we're going along, but furniture artists, jewelers, uh, jewelers, um, costume artists, color material designers, sculptors, clay modelers, um, glass artists, gallery owners, independent artists. And this is just a fraction of the many opportunities for students who are craftspeople, right? They can make objects. They understand the craft and art of making and uh, 
ways that you can know if this is you is if you love working with your hands. Like I said earlier, you don't mind getting dirty. You like making 3D objects, right? You think in a 3D way about the world. Um, if you're somebody who makes your own jewelry, you may find that that's a, a path that you want to pursue. I have students, it's interesting. I have students, they do one thing in their portfolio and they're like, I love this, I'm gonna do it forever. I'm gonna study a different field because this is more practical. No, there are jobs and opportunities in all the majors that I'm speaking about today. Um, if you love making beautiful things, right? If you're somebody who, someone can hand a, just a pile of things, like something that people would typically discard and you can make it into something new and beautiful and functional, you're a craftsperson, right? Um, and obviously, many of us love Play-Doh, but if you were obsessed with it and you want to sculpt all day, every day, um, you might have been a craftsperson growing up and just didn't know it. So next, we're going to talk about our entertainment arts department. And entertainment arts covers four different majors. Um, first, we're going to talk about animation, very popular major at CCS. Animation and all of the majors within entertainment arts is about storytelling, right? That is the key underlying theme with students who come into the entertainment arts program is that they love stories and they are the artists that bring stories to life. For our animation students, that means they're bringing stories to life through 2D, 3D, and even stop motion animation. So they're learning not just how to create characters, but to mobilize them, right? They're learning how to take a, a, a 3D maquette and actually animate it through stop motion animation. So time-based media is what they're working on in the program at CCS. Obviously, these are static examples of work, but many of the, the work that these students are producing moves, right? Because they're doing motion-based work. Um, and a lot of our animation students are stepping into careers in major animation studios like Disney, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, um, etc., Pixar. I know if anybody tuned into my last alumni live, the one alumni talked about working for several animation companies, right? Um, so that's animation at CCS. Uh, separate from that is concept design. I know a lot of students get the two sort of confused because they like working with characters. Concept design is specifically for students who want to go on to careers as concept designers. And these are the people who visually context, or they take and, and visually bring to life, I was about to use a big word, uh, bring to life the concepts for film and sometimes for video game development, right? And so they're working on four key elements of storytelling. They're working on characters, environments, hardware, which is all the tools, the weapons, you know, vehicles, etc., and architecture. So environments, architecture, characters, and uh, I'm mixing up my words. Characters, environments, architecture, and hardware, right? Those are the four areas that they're bringing to life. Um, a great example um, of, of this work comes from the actual department chair of entertainment arts, um, Tim Flattery. He is a world famous concept artist. He actually um, graduated from CCS um, and has worked on over 40 films in his 30 year career um, as a concept artist and concept designer. He's worked on, you know, Batmobiles for the industry. He's worked on um, anybody seen Avengers Infinity War. He worked on the concept for the Infinity Gauntlet. When you think about a film, someone has to think about, okay, yes, we know what Wonder Woman looks like, but for this film, what does her costume look like? What does her lasso look like, right? We know um, what the Avengers do, but where, what does their world look like? Someone has to design those things in a way that can actually tactically be built out in CG graphics. And that's what concept designers do, right? And this is a really unique program um, at CCS. It's a competitive program. Um, there are not a lot of schools that offer concept design specifically. So if you're interested in this field, definitely want to look into the program at CCS. For students who want to work with live action, um, digital film is an area that we offer in our entertainment arts program. And digital film is all about live action storytelling, but understanding the full, uh, the full process of production. That's everything from shooting, uh, writing, editing, lighting, directing, producing, right? So it's not just enough to be able to write a script, but you also want to know how to shoot. You also want to know how to direct because in the industry, there are a lot of opportunities, right? Um, I have students who come and they say, I want to work on film. And I was like, well, what, what role do you want to have? And they're like, director. And there's maybe, you know, a few directors here and there on films. But if you look at the credits, there are a lot, a lot of career opportunities for films, right? There are a lot of people working on films, aside from the little small list of actors. There's a whole bunch of other people making films come to life. And so in our entertainment arts digital film program, students learn that full spectrum of skill sets. And the really cool thing about this is that film is a broad uh, uh, art form, right? There's 
obviously uh, narrative filmmaking, which we typically see in movie theaters, but there's also documentary filmmaking, right? Who's making the things that we go and watch on National Geographic, right, on the animal planet? Someone has to understand how to tell stories in that format. Or what about alternative forms of filmmaking, like music videos, right? That's not necessarily a long form movie, but someone has to understand the elements of how to work on that type of video production. And our students are learning everything in the spectrum of, of filmmaking, including experimental film, right? Um, so it's a, a very vast and diverse program. And then the last program um, within entertainment arts is video game design or game design. So students who are interested in augmented reality or virtual reality, they're really learning the skills to do 3D modeling in the program at CCS. And they're learning how to use those skill sets to bring to life characters, uh, environments. Uh, they can go on to do level design, um, storytelling for the game industry. Um, again, user interface design for gaming. Um, the game culture is growing. Gamification is not just something we're seeing on our Xboxes, but it's something we're seeing on social media, right? There's games that we can go and play with uh, Snapchat and Instagram filters. Game is a broad field, and students are learning skill sets for, for a variety of, of game implications, but particularly very strong 3D skill sets in the program at CCS. So again, when students graduate from this program, they have opportunities in a lot of different areas. They can go on to become 3D modelers for animation or game. They can do animation, they can do visual development, they can do cinematography, they can become concept artists and designers, editors, directors, visual effects artists, um, level designers for games, uh, storyboard artists, and, and much, much more. They are story artists through and through in a lot of different applications. Ways to know that you are an entertainment artist is you love stories, period, right? That's obviously a clear way of knowing. Um, but if you're somebody who's always coming up with concepts for characters or stories or games or TV shows, you may be an entertainment artist. I have students who I meet and they show me work in their portfolio and they say, this is just one character from an entire universe that I've been created, creating since fifth grade. You're an entertainment artist, right? Um, but if you like making mini movies, if you're someone who's always filming things and editing little uh, movies together, you may be a digital film artist, right? If you're a hardcore gamer, period, all right? If you love gaming, gaming is life. You have a gamer chair, a Twitch channel, you stream, and you're obsessed with games, and you look at everything that happens on the level, you can point out flaws in the game, you might be a game designer, right? And obviously, a lot of us love cartoons, but if you're obsessed with cartoons, and you dream of making your own one day, you're like, Disney is cool, but I'm going to be the next Disney, right? Uh, not only is entertainment arts a good fit for you, but CCS is probably a good fit for you. So these are some things to consider and look at when you are choosing a major, if you're interested in storytelling, all right? And clearly, uh, I, I didn't mention this, but uh, we're gonna talk about illustration as well, because there are a few students I know who are interested in both and they're not sure the difference between the two. So we're getting there. But first, we're gonna talk about fashion accessories design, which is an industry that not a lot of high schoolers know about. I know a lot of folks say, I know about fashion design, designing garments, right? Yes, that's one facet of the fashion industry, but there's a sliver of it that's about, you know, $51 billion sliver of the fashion industry, that's fashion accessories. These are the things that most of us have access to, right? We're not going and buying gowns off of runways, typically, but people do go and buy handbags, shoes, belts, purses, you know, leather goods, hats, etc. And so in the program at CCS, students are learning the skill sets for, oh, I see someone says hi, hello, um, learning the skill sets for having their own design vision, right, for a, a fashion accessory product, actually crafting and making that product, right? So this is not just theory and, and sketching. These students are actually learning to fabricate these fashion accessories. And then also fashion business, right? So they're learning how to create handbags, shoes, leather goods, and, and hardware, right? So buckles, appliques, etc. But then they're also understanding the business, merchandising, tech packs, trend forecasting. So students in this program are getting the benefit of being able to direct people as fashion accessories designers, but also knowing the fashion industry. And they're being guided by a department chair who has a huge voice in the industry. Aki Chakola is the uh, department chair of our fashion accessories program and he's built programs like this in other countries. He is a person who works in men's footwear and trend forecasting. So they're getting to learn this stuff from the best and this is actually why um, this is a unique program at CCS. We're uh, the only school 
in the Midwest, the first and only of its kind in the Midwest focusing on fashion accessories. So when you're thinking about getting in the fashion industry, think about this. Sometimes the directors of large fashion brands are actually people who have their backgrounds in accessories and not in garment. Something to think about. Um, and there's wonderful um, internship opportunities for all of our majors, um, including uh, this major, which is one of our newer ones. So if you're interested in doing footwear design, becoming someone who is the voice of future trends, right? You're forecasting what we're going to be wearing next season or the season after that. Um, if you like the idea of making patterns for fashion accessories, handbags, product uh, development, uh, color material designers, these are the types of careers our students step into. I um, mean, the way that you can know if this is your major is clearly you have a passion for fashion. You just love style, right? Um, you take your clothes and you repurpose things and you add your own flair. You turn your clothes into new clothes because you have a, a unique design vision for fashion. Um, if you have a curated closet and people can tell that that belongs to you and that's something that you would wear, you have a unique voice with fashion, this may be a major to consider. If you're someone who's obsessed with fashion blogs and magazines and all the Instagrams that you're following and things on Pinterest, if people still use Pinterest, are fashion oriented, this is a good sign that that's a major for you. Um, and if you notice people's shoes before you notice their clothes, if you notice their purse before you notice their clothes, um, if you notice their accessories first, clearly fashion accessories is where it's at for you. Um, and also if you have an interest in being in the fashion industry, but not just making things, you may want to be a leader, right? A manager, a forecaster, um, doing merchandising, fashion accessories is still a great fit for you as a major. All right, now illustration. Illustration. This is the major for students who love to draw, right? You're drawing your face off. At CCS, we call this, uh, like many of our majors, a traditional major, where students are learning both traditional and digital techniques for drawing. They are drawing in any medium imaginable, watercolor, oil, pastel, ink, charcoal, digital, right, etc. And they are strong visual communicators focusing first on the foundations of drawing, right? Learning the basics of things like anatomy and perspective and taking those understandings into their developing their unique style as an illustrator, right? So uh, illustrators, they, can't, they can draw what's directly in front of them, but many of them also have a unique, unique way of using their drawing uh, to interpret a, a visual theme, right? And this could be observational, imaginative, whatever. And illustrators, uh, when they graduate from CCS because they can draw, period, in many, 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 many mediums, um, they have a lot of different careers that they step into, right? Um, they're not quite artists and not quite designers because they're both. Right, and so they step into careers as advertising illustrators, as animators. They work on graphic novels and comic book um, art. They are cartoonists. Um, they are editorial illustrators. They have their work in publications and magazines, storybook illustrators for children books. Um, they're in the fashion industry as fashion illustrators. Um, they're painters. They have their work in galleries. They have a lot of different career opportunities because they can visually communicate in a variety of mediums. Um, so ways to tell if you are an illustrator is you love drawing. Now one way to tell the difference between if you're an illustrator or an entertainment artist, because both may have a hand in storytelling, right? Um, these students are typically working on 2D art if it come, if, as it pertains to the entertainment industry, right? So a static character or a storyboard that's not moving. It may be talking about the motion, but it's not moving, right? They are not taking the character and then animating them through time and space, right? Um, so that's the difference, right? Motion versus static. Um, but both are storytellers. Um, but also a way you can tell if this is your major is if you have sketchbooks on books, on books, on books, and they're filled to the brim with sketches and ideas of characters and observation and musings, right? Um, not everybody can fill up a sketchbook, but I tell you, illustration students can. Um, you know, if you doodle on everything, on your homework assignments, on your tests, on your notes, people, you may get in trouble in class for doodling on notes, which you shouldn't. That's highly encouraged at CCS. It's a way of some of us processing. Um, you may be an illustrator. Um, and if you can draw not only what you see in real life, but also what you see in your head, you can bring those things to life on paper. You're definitely an illustrator. And if you follow other illustrators, right? A, a, a good way, and we talked about this in the Ikigai Live, is looking at who influences you, who you're motivated by. So if you're following a lot of other illustrators, chances are you may be an illustrator, right? All right, let's talk about interior design. When I'm in classrooms, I stop my feet, but you guys can't see my feet, so I clap my hands. This is not interior decorating. 
interior decorating, just pairing pillows and couches. You know, some of our grandmothers can be interior decorators, but interior design is really about understanding spaces and understanding how a space impacts a specific user of that space. So you think about an example like the visual here, a yoga studio, there are particular types of people who go to yoga studios. There's particular functions that happen in a yoga studio. So an interior designer has to think about that person, understand their needs, understand the implications of the space, and then make decisions about the space, about the lighting, about the layout, Yes, about furniture and, you know, color, um, but they're not only thinking about aesthetics, they're thinking about function. And at CCS, we're teaching students um, really the how to influence the aesthetics and feel and function of a space in a variety of types of spaces. Those can be things like residential spaces, homes, apartment buildings, etc. They can be retail spaces, stores, etc. Commercial spaces, right? They can be airports, hotels, they can be medical spaces, cancer centers. That's actually one of the sponsor studio projects that our students have worked on. Libraries is another sponsor studio project our students have worked on. Um, and then not only the spaces of architectural buildings, but also the interior of vehicles, right? Um, when we get inside of an airplane or a, a car, someone has to think about the function of that space and the color and material implications of those spaces, what functionally and aesthetically works. And so interior designers in our program are taught all of those things. Um, and so if you're somebody who is really interested in architecture, think about this. Architects work on a shell. Interior designers work on everything inside of that shell, right? They are architects of the interior spaces and sometimes exterior spaces, right? Um, maybe not a building, but in exterior spaces like parks, etc. Um, they work on exhibit design. There are a lot of different things that interior designers do uh, once they're complete with the program at CCS and they're learning all the skills necessary to do that. Taking the coding classes for, you know, what legally can happen in this space, right? Has to be ADA compliant, et cetera. So you can go into automotive color and trim as an interior designer. You can go into color and materials design as an interior designer. You can do commercial and contract interior design, exhibit display, like I mentioned, hospitality, um, residential design, and, and much, much more. Ways that you can tell that this is the major for you is if you love watching HDTV and you just wish one day you could get your hands on materials and a space to transform, right? Um, you can go into a building and look at it and say, man, I know how this space could not only look better, but could work better. Like, why is this wall here, right? Interior designer. Um, you can transform a space into something that you have in mind, whether that's a, a, not just a room, but you can take a locker and make it look like a whole nother thing. Everybody else is like, how did you fill all this stuff in your locker and make it beautiful, right? That's something only an interior designer's mind can do. Um, you also think about the display of things, right? Like I said, ex uh, exhibition and exhibit design is something interior designers can do, right? So you think about the things that are ephemeral or moving, space, texture, color. You are moved by spaces. That's a good sign that this is a, a good fit for you as a major. Um, if you're somebody who in Home Depot, one, you just love probably Home Depot. Uh, but if you're obsessed with the paint swatch aisle and it's like, you know, the can the kid in the candy shop aisle for you, color theory, you might be an interior designer. Um, or if you go in the, you know, Joanne Fabrics or Michaels and you're looking at the fabrics and you're like, oh my God, I, I just want to use this stuff to make a pillow and then transform a space, right? Maybe an interior designer. But again, I want to emphasize that interior designers are interior architects. They think much, much, much deeper than just interior decor, okay? All right, moving on to photography, right? Photography, we all know what photography is, but at CCS, photography is thought of as a medium that, again, is traditional, traditional and digital. So yes, students are still shooting with film cameras and working in dark rooms, but they are also shooting with digital cameras and learning how to manipulate their photography with uh, industry standard software. Now, photography is a broad field, right? So we wanna make sure the students stepping from CCS are prepared for this broad industry and as an industry that shifts. And so at CCS, we're teaching a variety of types of photography. We're teaching students documentary style photography. We're teaching them how to do commercial photography. So the things you would see, for example, in a fashion shoot. Um, we're teaching them fine art photography, right? Some of our photography students just wanna have their work on gallery walls, right? Um, so whether you wanna tell stories with photography, you want to create art with photography, or you want to display you know, brands and products of the world um, with photography, you learn all those skill sets at the program at CCS. And it's a really intense program. Um, 
I would say I know a lot of students come to CCS like I've been a photographer forever. I shoot all my friends, sing your photos. I do wedding photography already. Why would I need to go to college? Well, photographers in this program at CCS are really learning in the same way that an illustrator can create an exact vision from their mind with drawing skills. Photographers need to understand a very in-depth uh, amount about lighting, about composition, about hierarchy. A, a lot of things go into the zone system, for example. If you don't know what the zone system is, you probably need to go to school to learn it, right? Uh, or at least learn it. Um, and so in the program at CCS, we're helping students learn to use their camera in the way that an, uh, a fine artist would use a paintbrush to create an exact image that they have in mind. It's not a bunch of pointing and clicking and getting lucky, right? This is intentional photography, uh, which is why our students are stepping into a variety of amazing careers. Um, they're commercial photographers, digital retouchers, right? Just manipulating photography. Um, I don't think I mentioned this, but I believe there's like four semesters of lighting classes at CCS. A lot of just lighting skill sets, right? Um, so you're an artist of light as a photographer. Um, but forensic photography, right? If you're interested in doing that, this is a, a field to consider. Photojournalism. We have students who've gone on to shoot work for the New York Times. Um, lifestyle photographers. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't also know is that photographers aren't just working in static images uh, in nowadays, right? You think about going to a website and at the header there is an image that's a moving image, right? It's like a small reel of a video. Photographers can shoot that type of work, right? Because they have an understanding of all the things I just mentioned earlier. And those aren't story pieces, right? That's not a narrative. That's not necessarily filmmaking. That's a moving photograph. And so ph photographers can learn that type of work. Um, so there are a lot of different opportunities. And obviously photographers can work for themselves or within uh, companies and uh, within or, uh, agencies. One other thing to know is that at the program at CCS, and, and this is true for all of our programs, we are providing students the tools needed to do this work. So if you're interested in photography, but you you know haven't had access to a DSLR, digital, um, camera um, those things are accessible on campus we have the studios the lights the cameras the lenses for free for students to use to do their assignments um, so that's something to consider but if you're always taking photos clearly this is a major to consider um, but not just taking photos taking thoughtful photos there's a difference between someone who's just snapping you know the kid cousin and their shoe and something outside and there and then there's you that's thoughtfully arranging and composing photos and getting the right angle to shoot if you're thoughtful about the photos you take, you may be a photography major. If you're always being asked to take other people's photos, right? If you are doing wedding photography and uh, class photos at this point in your career, um, this may be a major to consider, um, right? If you're arranging your own photography shoots, right? If you're like, I just want to do a fashion shoot for the heck of it. No one's asking me to. Clearly, you have a passion for this thing. Um, if you spend a lot of time tweaking photos before you post them to Instagram, you are a photographer, right? Um, I know I am not. I'm just like, I took it, it, it works, right? Um, if you are someone who really focuses on light, and you have a unique perspective of the world and you can capture that with a camera, it's a major to consider. All right, product design, right? All the things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis are made by creative people. Many people don't know that. <laughs> product design, industrial design, it's the same thing um, at CCS. We actually have industrial design broken out between product design and transportation design. But product design are the people who are making our day-to-day -day lives better with design. They're designing the toys that we use, the consumer goods that we use, the tech that we use. And and the program at CCS, they're learning the, the, the research necessary to understand the consumer's needs, then using 2D skills for drawing and sketching to problem solve and ideate the way to solve that problem. And then they're learning, learning all these skills, learning the 3D skills necessary to make a model or a replica of that product. And when I say 3D, yes, 3D on a computer like this, but also like a physical prototype, right? So they're learning the design thinking process to solve problems. That could look like making an athlete have more endurance through designing a, a better athletic shoe. Um, I know uh, I just watched an amazing talk earlier today with one of our product graduates, Jason Maiden, um, from Super Heroic. Look up at Super Heroic and just learn his story. It's amazing. But he's um, solving problems for kids with footwear design as an athletic footwear designer. Um, but if you're somebody who likes the idea of inventing, of making our world better with the things that we use, right? Whether that's products that exist and innovating them or with new products that don't even exist, you are a product designer. Product designers design 
everything from appliances, like I said, shoes, toys, um, they are, you know, influencers, right? They understand how people think and can step into companies like Google and really do a lot of different tasks, right? It's not just designing physical products, but they can also manage higher level thinking about design systems uh, because of the way that they're learning to think and solve problems creatively in this program. Um, now, one thing you'll see here is furniture designer comes up again, right? And we talked about furniture with our craft and material studies. The difference here is that this is, again, solving a problem. So while a furniture student from our craft and material study may think about an aesthetically beautiful chair, they're making a wonderful chair, a product designer may, thinking, may be thinking, how can I make people sit different? Like, how do I solve the problem of how we sit, right? They're thinking about it from a different from a different perspective, a different angle. And typically, product designers can work on things that are more mass produced. It's not like they're working, you know, on a chair for 50 hours, right? Um, but medical devices, right? They're solving problems for our world. So ways to know if you are a product designer is you've always dreamed of being an inventor growing up, right? You would tinker and make your ideas for uh, things that could work, right? If you made your own booby traps <laughs> as a kid, you're like, I know how to rig this and make it work, you know? maybe a product designer if you're torn between art and engineering this is the the intersection where those two things meet if you love your art classes and you love science and the way things work this is the major for you right if you want to make the world a better place using your creativity all of these majors do that but specifically by designing products uh, obviously product design is a great way of doing that um, and if you haven't heard the story of Veronica Scott that's another alumni that I would recommend looking up um, I'm going to tag, when I share this live afterwards, I'm going to tag some of the people I reference so you can go and look up their stories because they're changing the world with product design. Um, if you're a sneakerhead, product design is a great fit because footwear design, athletic footwear design, sneakers, are designed by product designers. Uh, CCS has graduates at Nike, at Reebok, at Adidas, Mi Ling, etc. Right? Um, all the major footwear designers have our graduates there. Um, and if you can modify things to make them more aesthetically pleasing but also more functional you may be a product designer maybe a major to consider now like i said the second half of the industrial design area at ccs is our transportation design major very well known for this major probably because we're in the motor city right it's the home of cars um, but our transportation design program really uh is not just about cars it's things that move objects that uh, get people and things from point a to point b these are cars that our students are designing. Trucks, military vehicles, uh, motorcycles, helicopters, boats, yachts, jets, planes, etc. If it moves, it's an object that moves. It's a vehicle. Our students in transportation design can design it. And the program actually focuses on three specific areas of transportation design. There's automobiles, right? So designing those. There's also, and that's, you know, aesthetics in the form of, of cars both exterior and interior, right? Not just the outside. But then there's also vehicles, like all the other things that fall under the, the, the bucket of things that transport objects. And then there's mobility. Obviously, uh, the transportation industry is something that's continuously transforming and growing, right? You think about autonomous vehicle design and how that may shift the marketplace. That may shift the way that we not only are you know, using our time in vehicles, but how our streets are laid out. It may change city infrastructure. Someone has to think about how that plays into mobility with public transit systems, right? Mobility is a, a topic that involves transportation. And that's something that our students are learning about in the program as well at CCS. So if you're interested, about, uh, interested in designing things that move, you can do so in our transportation design program. And similar to product design, these students are solving a problem for a unique consumer, a unique user of a, a mode of transport, right? So, you know, the person that designs, a, you know, a military vehicle has to think about all the implications of that military vehicle, right? Or the person who designs a, a motorcycle has to think about what that user is doing with that motorcycle and the function of that vehicle, right? So they're understanding that consumer Again, problem solving and sketching in 2D and then moving on to renderings on a computer and also doing a little bit of 3D modeling um, uh, digitally to walk people through a space, a little bit of animation to show them how vehicles are modeled, but then also making physical objects. Most of the cars that we see on the road are sculpted in clay or foam first and not digitally. And clay modelers are people who are doing that work. So that's a career path. Um, so clay modelers, airplane designers, 
Again, color material designers, mass transit design, boat design, etc. These are the types of careers students step into with a degree in transportation design. And ways to know that this is your major is you love things that move in general. You're obsessed with planes and boats and helicopters and all the things I just listed. You're a gearhead. You're a person who goes to auto shows or the Woodward Dream Cruise. I'm not a person who goes to the Woodward Dream Cruise. Some people are obsessed with cars, right? <laughs> if you can name any car that you see, you're probably a transportation designer. Um, if you're someone who really is interested in uh, things like first robotics, um, you like the idea of, of, again, those are objects that, that move, right? Um, if you're doing the, the more of the, the robotic side, um, then you may be interested in either product or transportation design. As a kid, you were obsessed with and collected toy boats or Hot Wheels, right? Um, then this may be a sign that you're interested in this, right? Um, so transportation design, designing the vehicles that get us everywhere. Now, I just covered all of the majors that we offer at CCS and there's still more things that students can study. So I'm going to quickly go through those as well. And then I'll take questions because I want to make sure I get your questions answered. Um, art education is not a major at CCS. It's something you can take alongside your major so that when you graduate from CCS, you not only have a bachelor's degree, but you also have a certification that allows you to teach kindergarten through 12th grade. And because of Michigan's agreement, you can teach in anywhere in the United States and, and even Canada, right? Um, so our art education program functions in a way where students alongside their major practice are taking classes in child development, psychology, educational techniques, and they're doing their student teaching hours, right? So the things needed to get that certification. Um, and so by taking an extra semester or year at CCS, they're graduating with those two things, right? The degree and the teacher certification. So the students who are studying this program, um, they have multiple career options not only all the career options for the particular major but all the career opportunities that exist for people with an art education background like obviously becoming an art teacher but also running a community arts gallery or becoming a, a director in a community arts uh program right they can do mu museum education right you think about uh art educators in the museum setting right people who have a vast understanding of history but can also educate others on that art history uh, they can do education in medical facilities. They can be, they start their training to become art therapists, right? So there are a lot of different implications of being an educator that understands art. And the way this program works at CCS is that the majority of your time, about 80% of your time is um, studio time and then 20% is teaching. A lot of schools flip that model. You learn a lot about teaching, but very little about art. And, and that's not how we structure the program because we believe you need to actually have a working understanding of your medium, of art practices, of art theory, of art history in order to be a proficient and amazing art educator. And we interviewed a few art educators on the IG Lives here, our CCS Alumni Live. So if you haven't seen the one with Ali or Fatima, go back and watch those or Craig. Um, Craig's also an art educator. So this is a fit for you if you love kids, right? If you always were excited to mentor or babysit or work with young people in your community and in your life. If you love the idea of being a teacher and always want to teach but don't want to sacrifice your love for art. You don't have to. Um, one way to know if this is something that you're interested in is if one of your biggest role models, again I talk a lot about role models, if one of your biggest role models and people that you look up to was your art teacher in high school or middle school or elementary school, right? I remember, I don't remember a lot of my teacher's names, but I can tell you all of my art teacher's names from kindergarten through, you know, being an adult. That's because those people matter to me. Art education matters to me, that's why I'm doing what I do. But this may be a good fit for you if that's something that you can also say for yourself. Um, and then obviously, if you're interested in having your summers off as an adult, many adults don't have their summer off, but teachers do. Something to consider, right? Um, so that's the art education certification. So these are all the areas where there are studio uh, practices, right? Where you're actually producing work. You're designing, you're making art, you're painting, etc. cetera. Um, all of our majors have studio practice. Uh, but we also have liberal arts at CCS and minors. So all of the majors that I mentioned, except for concept design and transportation design, students can take as a minor. So if you were listening to this presentation today and you thought, I really can't choose between photography and advertising or art practice and crafts, 
you can craft a material studies. You can major in one area and minor in another. So you can study multiple things at CCS. But we also have liberal arts concentrations. Some of us are interested in things like literature and history and, you know, uh, less of the making, but the things that are adjacent to the art community through liberal arts. And so we have things like art history where you can have a deeper understanding of art history and that's something you can tack on to your major, right, as a concentration. Or art therapy, if you want to begin the path to become an art therapist and use art as a means to help people rehabilitate, whether that's through trauma, whether that's through drug abuse, um, et cetera, art therapy clearly is something you want to consider. Um, if you're interested in, um, excuse me, my, my plugs are falling. Um, if you're interested in critical theory, right? Thinking about art critically, thinking about the psychological and uh, uh, thinking about psychology and sociology um, and how those things impact uh, visual, the visual arts, right? Being able to talk about art at a critical level. Um, we have critical theory, creative writing. I have a lot of students who are like, I like to write scripts and draw, or I love poetry and making art. Um, or, you know, I want to be a copywriter and an art director. Creative writing really helps students to develop their, their writing skills deeper um, through the concentration. We have entrepreneurial studies, which clearly we have people out there who want to start their own businesses. They want to work for themselves. And we have a ton of students who are entrepreneurs who graduate from CCS. If you want to learn not just how to make you know, objects as a craft and material studies or design as a communication designer, but run your own design firm or your own, you know, craft studio, um, then entrepreneurial studies is something you can study uh, where students are learning things like how to write a business plan, how to apply for grants, branding for artists and designers, money management for artists and designers. The things that you learn in a general business class versus the things you learn in a business class for artists and designers is different. Right? I have a lot of students who say, I make money as an artist already. And I ask them how much they charge. They clearly have not taken the business class in art and design. There's some things you need to learn about contracts, right? Um, and more. And so entrepreneurial studies gets our students prepared to um, either start their own businesses or lead businesses of art and design. Sustainability and social responsibility is an area for students who really want to think about the impact of art and design on our planet and our people, right? There are a lot of social causes that a lot of us are being really, really moved by right now, right? Um, some of us are really deeply moved by the history and, and the context in which these things are allowed to happen and the role of art and designers, artists and designers in these movements, right? Black Lives Matter, right? Police brutality. Um, those are social issues. And some artists and designers feel that they have a responsibility to make impact on issues like these. Sustainability and social responsibility helps you to uh, have deeper understanding of the world so that you can have a greater impact, right? Or you can have conversations about the impact that artists and designers are having in these spaces. And sustainability is obviously about our planet. Global warming is not fake, right? That's a thing. And artists and designers are using materials on a day-to-day -day basis to, to impact this world. Um, so that's something that our students are thinking about. And then visual culture, right? That's a, a broad spectrum. Everything from gifts to music videos uh, to cult classic films, understanding why things uh, have the impact that they do on culture from a visual perspective. So there are clearly, as you can see, a lot of things that students can study at CCS, but we also have an undeclared major. So if you're unsure of what area you wanna focus on, right? You're still torn. Um, obviously, you can talk to an admissions counselor and get some guidance, but um, students can come in for the first semester at CCS as an undeclared student and be interdisciplinary. Take uh, classes in the intersections of art and design and see what may be the best fit for them. So they can choose a class in their first semester and then, like everyone else, take four years of classes in their major. Students start off in their major um, as freshmen at CCS. So I hope this overview of our majors provide you with some helpful insights. Um, if you have questions, please add them to the Q&A box. 
Um, I'm going to answer the questions off of our live because I'm running short on time here. I've been talking for almost an hour now. Um, but I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. I hope that these insights were helpful to you. And if you need additional guidance uh, or have additional questions, aside from adding them to the question box, if you're watching the recording of this, please reach out to CCS's admissions office. Reach out to admissions at collegeforcreativestudies.edu via email. You can DM me here on Instagram um, or call our office, 313-664-7425. We are here to help you pursue the major that is the best fit for you so you can change the world with your creativity in only a way that you can. I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight and I'm excited to answer any questions you have. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye.